No books. We all have way too many of them, but we keep buying more. What I want to talk about today are just some of the different features that you might find in notebooks available on the market and which ones you may or may not find useful. Now, depending on what you use your notebooks for, not all of these will be useful to you, but hopefully some will be. So let's just dive right in. Now, to start off with, this notebook here has a really nice looking cover, but that's about it. Nothing really uh, inside to speak of, so sometimes you just want a pretty notebook. Other times, you want one that has an elastic closure. Now, this just helps keep the notebook closed. You just slide it over the top and the pages stay closed nice and easy. Another thing that you might find really helpful and important is having a notebook that just opens and lays flat. Now, this is a brand new notebook. I haven't done anything to it. And you can see, I just open it up and it just lays flat. Now, compare that to maybe this notebook here, and that doesn't really work. Um, there's a lot of reasons for this. Some parts of it will, some parts of it won't. But a big part is the number of signatures that are in the notebook. So that's something to keep an eye on. The more signatures a notebook has, the better it's going to lay flat. All right, here we have one that has another pretty cover on it. This was one I picked up in Paris and it's screen printed. So this one is more of a memory for me than a functional notebook. This was kind of a souvenir, if you will. Um, some notebooks you get because they have incredible paper. Now this one is really neat looking. It has kind of this nice uh, uh, edge on it, but the paper is also fantastic. Some of the best paper out there for fountain pens. Uh, for particular things, it's not gonna be the fastest dry time, but it is so fun to write on, shows great sheen. So sometimes you just want a notebook that is a lot of fun to write in. Uh, another no type of notebook you might want, uh, or another thing to consider, is the binding style. Now this has a spiral binding, which of course means it opens and lays flat. You are going to be fighting the spiral from time to time, but you're guaranteed it's going to lay flat on any given page. It also has uh, perforated pages that are easy to tear out, so if you do sometimes like to tear pages out of your notebook, look for uh, something like that where you can actually tear the pages out without having to cut them out. Sometimes size is a big deal as well, and you don't always want a really big, thick notebook like this one here. Maybe you just need a little something skinny that you can throw in a bag. Uh, it's really lightweight, doesn't have a lot of pages, pretty low commitment, so I think there's only 35 pages or so in here. You fill it up very quickly, you're done, move on to the next one. Uh, so sometimes smaller is better. And finally, you want a notebook that has a lot of different features. Um, for example, this has a hardcover. Uh, it's the only hardcover out of the bunch here. Uh, that allows you to maybe write without having a surface underneath it. Uh, and a lot of these notebooks also have rear pockets in them. So if you do want to carry anything with you, stick it in your notebook, this keeps it safe, keeps it from falling out. And finally, uh, this also has page numbers. So having page numbers inside of a notebook is really good for uh, keeping track of where you are. If it comes with an index in the front, like this one does, then you can also track what you put where. Great for bullet journaling or just uh, basically being organized. Now I mentioned the size of your notebook and I'm not just talking about the thickness. Another thing to consider is just whether you want one that's pocket size, something like this, or something that's bigger, uh, like this A5 size, or maybe even bigger, something that's going to uh, sit on your table, give you more paper to write in. So the thickness is one thing to consider, but the actual size of the page is another thing to consider. A lot of people really like pocket notebooks, uh, something they can just throw in a bag, throw in their pocket, take with them. Uh, you know, if you have a pocket here, this fits really nicely there. Uh, you can't do that with something like this, obviously, just a little bit too big. Now one more thing to consider is the page style or page layout that you enjoy writing on or that you might need for any given purpose. Uh, you can choose from lined, which is found in pretty much every notebook that's out there, has a lined option. Uh, there's going to be a dot grid, which is something like this, where you don't have lines, you don't have grids, you actually just have dots and they can help guide your writing without being too overwhelming. Uh, you can have a, let's see, that's lined, that's lined. This one is blank, which I love blank. You can put a guide sheet underneath if you want to, uh, to give you lines to write on. 
but then you don't have the lines when you look at it. It has a really nice clean look. Also great for doodling and having fun with if you don't want lines or dots getting in the way. And finally, I don't know if I have one here, but there are also just plain old grids where it's like the dot grid, but there's lines going uh, vertically and horizontally. To me, that's the most distracting. Um, it reminds me of math or engineering, and that's not really what I want to think of when I'm using my fountain pens. So uh, that's another option, but probably I would say the least popular of the bunch. So there's lined, dot grid, blank, or just plain grid. And any of those are going to work just fine. The paper is still paper, but it's really your personal preference as to which you enjoy using the most. So that's going to do it for this video. Very short and sweet. I just wanted to touch on a lot of the different features that are available in notebooks. Uh, there's probably some that I missed, but you can always check out my blog for specifics for any given notebook and see what they have to offer. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed what you saw, please subscribe below and I'll see you next time. Happy writing.